Okay, today, finally, we're gonna take apart the F3. I've never pulled motors off of one of those models of permobiles before. I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty much the same as everything else. They, uh, they kind of have like a center round part and they bolt onto a plate with four bolts, no big deal, whatever. But, got my tools here. And apparently, we work on chairs in the laundry room now. I couldn't find another place that I felt okay with using a floor jack. The linoleum back there is not in very good shape, so whatever. My foot's healed up enough now. I'm pretty sure I can get this thing taken apart and only have to get back up off the floor like maybe once or twice. And I didn't turn off my notification sounds. We're gonna scurry back here, pull the wheel off that thing, see what's going on, and uh, I'm assuming it just needs the brushes cleaned out. Oh, I also got canned air. Ta-da, we have whippets. Or whatever you're supposed to call these. Anyways, let's go back here and get this thing taken apart. Pretty sure I've got all the tools I need. And we've got the jack underneath this thing. So, oh, by the way, a lot of people ask about this jack I use. It's just like a Harbor Freight low-profile aluminum jack. It doesn't actually fit under, these, under this chair. I have to sort of lift up one side and kind of jam it in there or run the tire up on something. But... Yeah, it's just a little cheapo jack, nothing special. It is a little bit too tall for most chairs, but it works in this case, so. I think I've got all of the tools we need. So, without further ado, I shall throw myself onto the floor and we're gonna rip this thing apart. So I need to start by getting these center caps off of here. It's pretty easy. There's just little plastic hooks. You just kind of reach around behind each spoke and you can pop them off like so. They are pretty tight. <coughs> there we go. But there you can see, there's just little um, little clippy things that kind of hold them on there. So just pop that off. I do not know where my impact Allen keys are at the moment. So we're just gonna use these. I don't think, yeah, these have never been off of here. Yeah, these have never been off. See, look, we still got the uh, paint marks on them and stuff. Interesting. Then we're just gonna go old school on these. I don't think my I don't think my quarter drive impact gun would have done this anyways, so. Oh, I think they use thread locker on these. Usually the usually you get a a pretty uh, substantial snap, and then they're just finger tight. Guess they didn't want these wheels falling off. Oh yeah, look at that. They got a bunch of thread locker on there. I mean, I'm not complaining. You don't want your wheels to fall off. It's just, out of all the things I've done, I've never had a wheel fall off of a power chair before. And there we go. We have one wheel and or tire. Oh. Um, maybe I should have taken a look at the service manual. This seems to be a little bit more buried in here than previous models. The motor seems to be behind the fender, and is that plastic? Yeah, that's plastic there as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to grab the service manual real quick and uh, see what the proper procedure is for this. And by service manual, I mean we're just going to take this bolt off here that looks like it's obviously holding part of the fender on. Yeah, interesting. Now the other side on this chair, these plastics are rattling a little bit, so it's probably going to be good to take these off of here anyways and have a look around. Looks like got some thumb screws here. Okay. Yeah, I need the service manual. This is not uh, inherently obvious how it comes apart. Okay, update. I still didn't grab the service manual. It appears as though this front part is held on with industrial Velcro, right there. And then this appears to be the same way, which actually it feels like, is that screw down there? Well, there was some Velcro right here. Yeah, I think there's a screw down here. I can't really see it. Yeah, there we go. So there's one screw on the bottom, industrial Velcro here. And looks like we're down to the motor. 
We've got this little metal bracket here that has Velcro on it. That's kind of an interesting design decision. And uh, it actually makes a lot more sense now as to why the plastics on the other side of the chair are rattling. Oh, yeah, see? They've got some little furry pieces of weird on here to keep it from vibrating. And right here as well. That was going to be my next thought. I'll just add some little pads of felt or Velcro to make it stop vibrating. But as you can see here, we've got our two pull motors. One of the brush housings is right here, and the other one is back there where you can't get to it. So, this has to come off of the chair. Looks like our wiring comes out down here. I don't really have any interest in pulling the whole back of this off and unplugging the wiring. So I think we're going to do these four bolts here are what hold the motor on, just like in the older chairs. I think I'm just going to pull those off and see if we can just sort of swivel the motor out and uh, let it lay here. I don't think there's a reason to actually disconnect all of this. Now these are the same motors that I've got on the steampunk chair and I also transferred onto another, um, uh, what you call it, a C300. They're slightly different, well actually quite a bit different <laughs> than the uh, C300 motors, but the design of the, they call this a drive unit. The, the gearbox and the motor is all built into one thing. The reason I do air quotes is the gearbox only has two moving parts in it. It's basically a, a worm drive with a giant Delron spindle. And there's sort of a little, yeah, see? We've got a little indentation here that sits in this hole. And yeah, we've got enough slack here to work with this. We'll just kind of lay this down right here. Yeah, I should probably take some photos of this. Pretty interesting look at how the suspension works. So we've got our main pivot down here, and the thing rotates on that. Your drive tire's up here, and then we've got our strut shock absorber spring thing up here. So this whole unit kind of does a one of these, pivoting around my thumb, which uh, actually explains why the ride is fairly good on these. The rear is sort of similar. It's got a longer cantilever back here, so you get a lot more force on it. I think I'm actually going to adjust these shocks down even a little bit more than I had them set previously. But uh, yeah, frame of the chairs here, which by the way, look how thick the metal is on the frame. I definitely enjoy how heavily built these things are. That stuff is not going anywhere. Even the swing arm is, uh, yeah, really heavy gauge metal. All right, uh, let's pop the brush housings open here and see what we got going on. I'm assuming they're just gonna be filled with filth. Of course, you know what they say about assuming. It means you don't know. So we'll just get our flat blade in here. Carefully remove this. You gotta be really careful with these little plugs though. They're usually made out of some sort of like fibrous, plasticky material. And if these things crack or the threads get bunged up or you can't hold the brushes in, yeah, your chair ain't gonna run anymore. The other thing also is I like to keep track of the orientation of the brushes because they'll go in here two different ways. It'll go in here like this and it'll also go in here like this. The way these things wear, they get slightly off center and if you put them back in the other way, they're just gonna make a little bit of noise as you're running around. You can kind of see on the top it's got a little bit of an overhang versus the bottom. That's just kind of the nature of how these brushes are. These housings are not 100% tight, and it's they're going to rotate like this a little bit as the chair turns. Now, 90% of the time, you're going to be going forwards, so these things are going to cog up like that, and we're going to have a little bit more wear here on the bottom than we do on the top. That's why if we put this in backwards, this edge is gonna be on the bottom, and when this cogs up, that's gonna dig in. Now, it's not a bad thing, necessarily. It takes a while for that to kind of wear down, and uh, it'll eventually stop making noise. Yeah, it does look a little bit grungy. It's kind of worn at a weird angle. Oh yeah, and look at this. We got a bunch of uh, striations on here, which, I mean, that's fairly normal for an electric motor. You can see you can tell how old it is by counting the rings. I don't think that's necessarily an issue, but it tells me there's probably some dirt in here. And by dirt, I mean brush material. So we'll set this down over here. 
let's flip this thing over and see if we can get the other one out. Oh, we got to uh, we got to pull off our little Velcro bracket here. Yeah, how is that held on? Is this three millimeter? Yeah, we got some little three millimeter Allen keys holding this bracket on here. I mean, I suppose it works, but it just seems weird to me to design and bolt on <laughs> this big metal bracket just to hold some Velcro. It seems like we could have used some little push clamps or something else maybe. I mean, I don't know, I guess if it works, that's fine, but it just seems like a strange design choice to me. So this is one of the bolts that also holds the brake mechanism onto the motor. Interesting. So you can kind of see here where this bracket picks up that hole. And then there's another one here. And then we have two more bolts. There's one right here and one down here that are holding the brake unit onto the motor itself. Okay, looks like we've got Loctite on these as well. Let's go ahead and pull this off of here. Yep, we got a bunch of gunk in there. See that? All right, let me see if I can set this down. Stay. So if we look closely at this, you can see there's a fairly decent amount of schmoo down in here. See how it just wipes away with my finger? Now this chair has right about 400 miles on it. I don't know what the service interval is supposed to be on these brushes as far as like cleaning them out and all that. We got plenty of brush left. I mean, I, I think typically these brushes will outlast the entire drive unit as far as the Delron gear and the worm drive and everything in here. And typically, at least in the US, they do not sell these separately. So typically if something's wrong, they're gonna replace the entire drive unit. And all we're gonna do is take this stuff and blow it around through the housing. We should be able to see some dirt flying out of this side and also this side. You could also use an air compressor for this, but you'd want to set it to a pretty low, a pretty low uh, pressure rating. Compressed air can cause a lot of damage to things. We're just going to blast some air in here, and in theory, you should see some crap come flying out of here. Oh yeah, see that cloud? Wow. I think cleaning is our only thing that needed to happen here. And you don't really have to worry about the liquid that comes out of here. It's not going to hurt anything in there. Yeah, it's making black skid marks on the floor. So to do this properly, you want to actually rotate the motor so the commutator in here turns a little bit. Okay, this is going to be very tricky to film, but I think, I think I can do it. Okay, if we look down inside here, see how we've got the outside, here I'll point with a screwdriver, we've got the outside housing here that the brushes slide down into that looks like this. And then down on the bottom, you can see we've got some more kind of brass colored stuff and there's a little line through the middle there. That is our commutator. And the brush needs to be in contact with two sections of that at once. There you can see that, that line's right about in the middle. So when these start getting dirty, and you can see all the chunks of debris in here, when that starts getting dirty, it can interfere with the contact point where this electrically touches down there. And when that happens, well, one, you can see we've got some scratches on here, which isn't really too big of a deal, but it also sort of fills in that gap and the dust can kind of get around in various spots in there and start making noise and all that. The chair may still work okay, but you need this area to be as clean as possible. Now, one of my friends has this exact same chair and he's experiencing kind of a low speed power loss. And I think he's got about 800 miles on his chair. And judging from the amount of dust that was inside this thing, I can tell that his chair is probably gonna have a lot in there. And when that starts building up, it will insulate between this and the commutator down there. And especially at low speeds, it's gonna prevent the power from flowing through there as easily. So I think on his chair, that's what's going on. 
it'll be interesting to look at the brushes in his and see, I mean, they don't really burn, but you'll be able to tell uh, what's going on or if there's something funky electrically going on. Because when part of this gets hotter than the rest, you're going to notice a little bit of difference. I'm going to put two of the bolts back in here. Actually, where's our wheels? There we go. These guys. And I'm going to use a screwdriver just to kind of turn this thing. Now, it is counterintuitive with this being a worm drive and all. You would assume that there's no way that turning this output shaft would make the motor turn. But the way the gears are cut in these things, they will turn. And there you go. It turns. <laughs> so let's stick our camera back down in here. Let's see, I think I can set a focus point right there. There we go. And now that I've gotten it to move, let's see if I can continue rotating it. Yeah, see? See how that's turning? So usually what I like to do when I'm cleaning these is spin this by hand while I'm spraying air through there. Hear the, uh, oh, come on, focus. Hear the noise it makes? It's kind of like when you put air duster into a computer fan and it starts spinning around. Technically to service these motors properly, this should be taken completely apart and the commutator should be cleaned by hand. But I don't think it's worn enough. There are a few scratches on the commutator that I was mentioning, but they don't appear to be deep enough to really cause an issue. So I'm just gonna call it good, I think. All right, let me grab a couple other things. We're gonna clean up these brushes and lightly resurface them. And I have thoughts about resurfacing brushes, which I will explain in a minute. Let's bring in a piece of junk mail here and we will lock the exposure. There we go. So let me brighten this up a little bit. There we go. So looking closely at these, you can see there's a little bit of schmoo on there. All I'm gonna do, is grab some of these wipes and just kind of lightly clean that off. As you can see, there is a lot of dust and debris. These brushes are almost, um, trying to figure out how to explain them. They're mostly a carbon material, which is conductive, but they're kind of like uh, chalkboard chalk in the sense that you could use them to write with, but since they're on that smooth surface in there, they tend to last a long time and don't really, really wear out that quick as it were. Now, here's the part that I'm hesitant to even mention. This is a file. Now, I like to just barely resurface the edge, the leading edge that's sticking out on this. You gotta be really careful doing this. You don't wanna bevel these or anything. This isn't like brake pads that squeak. You don't wanna put a big chamfer in there. All I do is very lightly take this top edge off. Looking down here really close, you can see there's almost a, a little hair, hairline fold on each corner here. All I'm gonna do is knock that down. Just the weight of the file is plenty to do this. You don't have to push very hard or hit it very many times. And there we go. I think that's all we need to do. Now this isn't necessary to make it function, but I just like to have these edges as clean as possible. Now you can see we've got a little bit of light reflecting off of that surface there, which has basically taken off that little lip that was hanging out. Those scratches, like I said, it, it still feels smooth. I can kind of feel them a little bit. In theory, taking this completely apart and hitting that with some very, very fine grit sandpaper would be okay, but we're not really dealing with any damage here, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, we got the motor just kind of sitting back on the chair here. I've installed the brush on the other side, and I just put in two bolts to lightly hold it in place. And I'm gonna show you how to reinstall these properly. Now, like I said before, these brushes will go in one of two ways, right side up or upside down. Eh. Worst case scenario, it's just gonna make noise if you get it in there the wrong way. 
But we've got some little ears here on the side of this tab. And this little collar right here is what electrically connects everything through this wire and through this thing. So when you put it in here, you can see this little spring-loaded thing just kind of goes wherever. What you have to do is rotate it so that this ear lines up with that slot and it pushes in like that. But as you can see, it just pops right back out. Here, I'll just show you with a screwdriver so you can kind of see how this goes in here. There we go. And that's how it sits in there. This cap is what holds this whole assembly in there and it also provides electrical connection up here into that brush. So you may wonder, how do I get this in here? Well, the way I've done it, you know, for years is basically just take your finger, get the thing pushed in, and then you're gonna take the corner of this and swivel it down in here. So now I'm holding it in like that. And while holding it, kind of flatten this out. Now you may think, Okay, it's crooked. How are your threads going to work? Well, while I'm holding it with my thumb, or in this case, these fingers, I put the screwdriver on here and gently, I'm not pushing very hard with anything, gently turn it the opposite direction until it kind of centers itself. There we go. Now it's clicked into place. And very carefully tighten it down. Now, this should not take any force at all. If we get to about here, and there's still th thread sticking out and suddenly this gets really hard to turn, that means that that little carriage assembly inside there is not seated properly. And if you tighten it down, you're just gonna bend those tabs. So the whole time you're turning this in, it should take almost no force. Now I should probably be using a larger flat blade. So you can see I'm kind of moving it back and forth here as I tighten it. And you only want enough torque here to get this snug. You don't want it falling out but if you try and put much torque on this, this is gonna crack. So I just kind of carefully work it into place here using this screwdriver that's a little bit too small, going back and forth until it's pretty snug in there. And I think that's good. Now, as you can see, even doing that, we've marred up these edges here a little bit. Not too big of a deal, but this plastic material will crack super easily. So at this point, I'm just going to tighten up two of these bolts and we're going to fire up the motor, spin it a little bit and see what it sounds like. The only reason I'm doing this is to make sure I didn't screw something up and if it's making like a horrendous clicking noise that's like seven times worse than it was before, I'll probably take it back out and uh, double check the brushes. Maybe I put them in upside down or backwards or something. I usually like to get a Sharpie. I don't have one here with me actually yes I do have a sharpie right here anyways I usually like to mark on those little brass plates uh, I just put a line that's like facing up maybe right one or two or a or B so you know which one's which because in theory reversing these between the two sizes between the two sides as well as flipping them upside down might create more noise again not a problem it's not gonna hurt anything but it's gonna take like 50 miles or more before those seed in and coincidentally when your motors are breaking in, that's what's going on. There's brand new brushes and they're slowly wearing into that commutator, getting the slightly round curve to them, seating in there properly. And yeah, so as far as motor break in, it's all about the brushes. Okay, let's fire it up and see what happens. Sounds like we're good. Cool, I think we're good. It may sound a little bit different under load, but uh, yeah, that's uh, basically a brush service on one of these things. Kind of interesting with all the plastics on here to take it apart, but at its core, it's still all the same components basically that Permobile's been using pretty much forever. They just redesigned the plastics and added some Velcro. Oh, which reminds me, we need to put this bracket back on. Something I should probably mention here while putting this bracket back on you may notice now that two of the bolts are out, this brake mechanism, it's a little bit floppy. It'll, it'll move around by hand. So when you get these in here, your, uh, your screws may not actually thread in place. So all you gotta do is kinda rotate this whole thing just a tiny bit until it lines up.
There we go. Now it's threading in. Which, putting the motor back on here first probably wasn't the best idea, because now I can't get in here with my wrench. But yeah, just uh, something to note when you're taking these apart. These two screws are holding quite a bit on here, and uh, it may not line up right away, but that's all you got to do to take care of it. Now, when you're putting the four bolts back in that hold the drive unit in place, there really shouldn't be any resistance. The bolts are just basically threaded into this giant piece of metal. It's a little bit thicker than it was on previous generations, so you shouldn't necessarily have an issue with cross-threading it. But they should be able to go in just finger tight or finger loose. Um, put them in by hand. You shouldn't need a power driver to do this. If you're having trouble getting them in there, just kind of lift up on the motor a little bit like this, like you saw me doing, and that takes the weight off of them, and then they'll turn a lot easier. Now, as far as the proper torque spec on these, I don't recall seeing one in the service manual, and this is one of those areas that's a little bit hard to explain. There's sort of a sixth sense, as it were, when you do a lot of mechanical work, and you can kind of feel how tight something should be by how the screw responds as you tighten it. I'm not going to say you want to get these as tight as possible, but you want to basically use your crisscross pattern like you normally would. Get everything pretty snug. Now the thing's in place. And we're going to go around and just tighten them all up again a couple more times. And then as far as getting them to the proper final torque spec, it's just kind of a thing I do by feel. These bolts will break. Like, it is possible to break these bolts using this thing. If I was to put these in here and lean on this with both hands, this can provide enough torque to snap those. So just be careful when you're putting them on. It's kind of like putting spark plugs in your car. There is technically a torque spec, but also at the same time, there kind of isn't. So... I, I don't really know how to explain that. So I've gotten these as tight as they need to be, and I think we're good on this side of the chair. At this point, I'm going to put this side back together. I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. I do have a video clip on my phone, I believe, of what this motor was sounding like. Also, while you're in here, it's a great time to just grab your Clorox wipes or whatever and just clean everything down on your chair. Because it's really hard to get to this stuff with the wheels on here. Um, yeah, so let's get this all cleaned up, make it look nice and shiny and new. Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, we're getting the other side taken apart now. One thing I wanted to mention, while you're in here with your wheels off, you want to check right here. These seals will pick up all kinds of like hair and other debris. Even if you don't live with someone that has long hair, I mean, it comes from grocery stores or restaurants or pretty much any place you can think of. But it's good to uh, get all this hair and stuff picked out of here so your gearbox doesn't start leaking. But just get yourself some tweezers or really fine needle nose pliers and uh, just kind of go around through here and get all this garbage pulled out. And after you get most of the hair and stuff out of there, another easy way to clean them is just to take one of these little wipes and do this sort of thing. Just kind of floss it around through there and get all the debris and other garbage out of there. Yeah, this this was all inside of there. Not that much, but still enough to uh, potentially compromise the seals eventually. Let's go ahead and take a look at reinstalling our plastics here. This industrial Velcro, while it is technically Velcro, it's not, um, oh. I just realized maybe I should bolt the motor on before I, uh, before I get ahead of myself here. We only had two bolts holding this thing on. Okay, now we got the motor back on here. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this Velcro. This is not your mama's craft Velcro here. This is like industrial stuff. I think this stuff is sold for holding like 50 pounds per square whatever, square inch or something. So when you put it back on there, it's a little bit tricky. We've got our side panel here, which I'm gonna wipe off a little bit just because professionalism. So we're gonna stick this back on here. There's a couple of slide hooks that this has to go into. So as you're putting it back on here, you have to kinda flex it around a little bit to catch that bottom one and the top one. 
And at the same time up here, you want to make sure this little tab is on top of this bracket. So there we go. Now it's in place. Back to the Velcro. This stuff is fairly interesting. It, um, it requires a fair bit of force to actually get it to, um, get it to engage. And you should hear it snap. I'm going to push down on it and you should hear a fairly decisive noise when it actually engages. Crunch. Did you hear that? On the other side, it was a lot louder, but I, you can kind of put your finger back here and feel the back of that plate and sort of push down with a fair amount of force, but you'll actually feel it click into place when it goes on there. If you just lay it on, it's not going to be attached and this is all going to wobble around. And now you can see, I can actually pull with enough force to bend this plastic and it's not coming back off. So that's one thing you want to check when you're putting these back together is to make sure that Velcro is actually firmly engaged. And same deal with this little front piece here. We've got uh, some more of that industrial Velcro up here. This has a little hook that it goes in on the bottom. Then you can just sort of swing it up into place. These bolts here just kind of pass through the hole and sort of center everything. And same deal here. You want to push down until it clicks. There we go. You're getting a little bit of rattling there, but the fender also hooks on this, which will push this to the side and keep that rattling from happening. If you notice here, our little foam pads have sort of moved out of place. So I'm going to peel this one back off and line it up so it looks like the other side there. Quick little peel and stick here. I'm going to rip that off. Clean the cat hair out of it or whatever that is. Put it back on here. There we go. Now for this, we've got two slide clips on the bottom here, and then there's another spot up here that engages with this clip. So you have to kind of put this on here, line up these two points, and also make sure that this is engaged. So you have to sort of push back on the whole thing as you put it down into place. And as you can see here, that little piece of foam is the only thing that keeps this from rattling on this cover. So I'll see when I get it put back together if I still have that vibration noise or not. But if I do, at least I know, uh, at least I know what to do about it now. And then we have one screw and washer that goes right into this hole here. Get this tightened down. Click. And now with this one bolt and these two little slide joints, this cover here shouldn't rattle anymore. Yeah, see, no rattle. The side of this plastic's pushing on this plastic and all that plastic's pushing on other plastic. Then there's pieces of foam and yeah, I think, uh, I think we're good. Oh, there's one more screw that goes on underneath here. I don't think this little screw actually holds anything. I think it's just used for uh, centering that hole in the plastic to keep all this stuff on here. Which, to their credit, even though there's Velcro and like a few randomly placed bolts, this all seems pretty solid. Nice work. Kind of strange design choices in my opinion, but apparently it all goes together and uh, does what it's supposed to. So yeah, there you go. One quick note, if you're insane enough to have spent $65 on a set of these star caps, which by the way, these are free when you buy the chair. Most insurance companies want you to have the yellow pukey gross squash pumpkin colored reflectors on here, but you can say, no, I want these. And there's no charge for them to do these when you're ordering the chair. But real quick note about putting these on. It's pretty simple. You just put them in here, line them up, push them in place. But here's the trick. You're going to hear them click into place, but they're not actually in there all the way. Listen. So you might think, oh, okay, it's on there. No, 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 it's not. It's snapped into place, but the latch on the back hasn't actually grabbed yet. You got to put your finger back in here and push down on every spoke. Listen. Snap. There we go. Now it's actually in there. These little tabs have to hook down on the back side, and you can actually reach back there and feel them with your finger. But yeah, there we go. Star caps installed. Uh, I've got the. We've got all the brush housings cleaned out. There was kind of a surprising amount of filth in there. I wasn't expecting after 400 miles to see that much wear. But then again, this is my chair, and I do run it hard and it is kind of tuned to maximum speeds and maneuvering and all that. I don't know if it really has any bearing on anything, but it is interesting that another friend's chair, which is completely stock, 
started getting the same issue at about 800 miles. So maybe I'm wearing them out twice as fast. Again, this chair is five years old. It's survived 400 miles of my abuse so far. So yeah, once again, good job, Permobile. It seems to function. So I just got completely finished with this. I'm to the point where I'm gonna get back into my chair and give this thing a test drive. I totally forgot. I went and grabbed my phone. I was gonna take photos of all the suspension and all the components and everything inside there because it was really cool looking. Completely forgot. I guess I'll just have to use screen grabs from this video. <laughs> Always something. Anyways, I'm gonna get off the floor. My back hurts. This is this has been probably about an hour, 90 minutes of screwing around, something like that. But uh, yeah. Anyways, let's hop into this thing and see if it uh, has any noticeable differences. All right, let's do some maneuvering on the carpet here and uh, see if we can get this thing heated up a little bit. Not getting any clicking sounds though from the left side like I was. Cool, I think we're good. Okay, well, I think it's fixed. I don't know if it was actually broken, but uh, it was definitely making some strange noises. Is it? I guess the roof's crooked. It makes the camera angle look weird. Anyways, whatever. So there you go. That's the magic inside the brush holders on a Permobile F3 with two pole motors. This is the 2016 model, but I'm pretty sure they haven't changed anything with the motors and whatnot. They may have made a few little updates here and there. I'm just, again, basing that on nothing. But that's what it looks like if you want to take them apart and clean them. As always, be careful. I, uh, yeah, if, if you mess up those brush holders or those caps, your chair is not going to work. Do not attempt to run your chair at all unless both brushes are in there and everything is completely sealed up. It will damage things. <laughs> that being said, uh, hopefully you enjoyed. And I've got the speed trap thing set up over here. I was kind of playing around with that. That's that speed measurement device. I got all the drivers and everything installed on it. I think in a couple of days I'm going to meet up with a friend. I'm going to try and get the soccer chair out there too, but we're going to go to a school that has a big, flat, smooth play area. And we're going to set this thing up, takes 50 feet of space, play around and see how fast this chair is, how fast his Quantum 6000Z is, and if I have enough energy to load it into the van, see what this soccer chair actually does when it's turned up all the way. So anyhow, I'll catch you guys in a few days.